All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about morphological transformations in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we can take this image here on the left, subtract it from this image here on the right, and we'll get some unknown picture that we'll find out what it's gonna be. So stay tuned. Okay, so what is morphological transformation? It's a kernel-based operation, so typically on binary images. And what it's going to try to do is emphasize either the foreground or the background by changing the size or shape of the image. And there's going to be also different permutations of these operations, so we'll see how combining the different operations will do different things. So why do we need it? Um, it's good for noise reduction, uh, image enhancement. Sometimes you want to thin or thicken certain lines or fill gaps. It also can be used for segmentation if you're trying to remove the background or foreground. Okay, so how does it work? Uh, there's a lot of different types. The two main fundamental operations is erosion and dilation. So the way erosion works is you look at a kernel. So inside the kernel, for erosion, you will take the minimum value inside the kernel. And then for dilation, you would take the maximum value inside the kernel. And then the preceding operations, the morphological transformations here, is a combination of erosion and dilation. So when you're doing the open operation, you're first doing erosion and then dilation. For close, you have to reverse order. So dilation first and then erosion. For the gradient operation, you have uh, dilation on the image and you subtract it by erosion. And you have top hat, which is you have the original image and you subtract the open operation. And then you have the black hat, which you take the close operation and then you subtract the close. Okay, so when we get into the code example, we'll see more, you know, the results of these operations. Okay, so let's jump, let's jump right into the coding. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and import some of the libraries that we'll need. So we have import cv2 as cv and then import uh, numpy as mp. I have import my map plot lib dot pi plot as plt and import os for some of my image paths. So I'm going to call our function morph trans. And then we have our if name equals main here. I'll call morph trans here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and read in our file. So we have root equals os.getcwd. And then we have our image path equals os.path.join. And we'll pass in root and demo images as our picture tessa.jpg. And then we're gonna go ahead and read in the grayscale image. So we have cv.unread, pass in image path, and then we have cv.unread, um, and we'll read it in as a grayscale. Okay, so we're gonna start off by having our plots. So plt.subplot, and we're gonna do two, four, two rows and four columns, and then We'll go ahead and plot the initial image, but we're going to threshold it first. So image gauss, we're going to call that image gauss. And then we have some max value that we're going to use. We'll set at 255. We have a block size of 7. And then we have offset C of 3. OK, so we have our image gaussian. It's going to be CV dot adaptive threshold, and we're gonna pass in our gray image. So we have our image gray, and then we'll pass in our max max value. And then for the type, we're gonna do CV dot, we're gonna use the adaptive, uh, CV dot adaptive threshold Gaussian here. And then this will be CV dot thresh binary, and we're going to pass in our uh, block size, and then we have our offset parameter, so offset C. Okay, so now we could run our Gaussian, 
Let's go ahead and plot it first and see how it looks. So plt dot um, show, and I'm going to pass in my image gauss. And we're going to do a C map of gray. Okay, and then plt dot title. We're going to call this uh, gauss threshold. And plt dot show to see it. So let's take a look at the image we're working with. Okay, so this is our image. It's a little bit blurry, so let's go ahead and add a Gaussian blur to this. So we're just going to call image Gauss here, and then say CV dot Gaussian blur, and pass in our image Gauss, and our kernel is going to be seven by seven, and then we have sigma x equals two. Okay, so if I run this again, you should see it's going to be a tad bit smoother. Okay, it's kind of noticeable if you zoom into certain areas, but we'll go ahead and use this as our main picture, which we'll do the morphological operations on. So for the first one, let's go ahead and make our kernel. So we have a kernel equals MP1s, and here we're going to pass in 7 by 7, and we're going to use um, uint8. And then we have erosion first. So erosion is cv.erode. And we're going to pass in image gauss and then pass in our kernel. And the iterations is how many times we'll do it. So we'll just do one time. Okay, so that will erode our image. And then we could go ahead and take a look at it. So plt.subplot. And then we'll put in the second subplot. So plt.show. And we'll do erosion here and cmap is gray. And then we have plt.title and we'll name it erosion. So we know what it is. So if I run the file, we should see the erosion. Okay, so you can see what this is doing. Right now it's emphasizing the background a little bit more. So the dark is darker and the white is whiter. Okay, but mostly Actually, mostly it's a black part that's being emphasized. Okay, so when we do dilation, we'll see more of a difference on how it differs. So I'm going to duplicate this code here. And instead of erosion, we're going to call this dilation. And instead of erode, the function is called dilate. And everything else is the same. So we're going to change this to our third plot. And if I go ahead and run this, we'll see the dilation. So the dilation, the white part gets uh, emphasized. So erosion, the dark part gets emphasized. The dilation, the white part gets emphasized. So you can see the region of the car and the sky here is a lot whiter. And then here, the background with the trees and uh, the road is a lot darker. OK, so those are the two core operations. And then we'll take a look at how the other operations will look like when you start combining the different things. Okay, so. Here we have, we're going to call morph types for the different morphological operations. So we have cv.morph um, open will be our first one. And then we have cv.morph we'll do close as our next one. And then cv.morph gradient, cv.morph um, top hat, and then cv.morph uh, black hat. Okay, so those are our operations. And then we'll have a corresponding morph titles here when we do the plotting. So we have open, close, gradient, we have top hat, and then we have black hat. Okay, so those are our different operations. And then we'll put everything inside a for loop. So we'll go ahead and have a for i in range, and then we have the length of our morph uh, types. And then for each one, we're going to have a subplot, so plt.subplot. And then we have a 2, 4. And we start, we plot it first three already. So we're going to do i plus 4, because the plot starts at 1. And then have plt.show. Um, and then here, we're going to pass in the cv. So the main function that we'll call, so for the other morphological operations, there's a special function called uh, morpho 
morphology X, EX here. So this is where you could pass in the operation. Okay, so here, what you're gonna pass in is the image, which is image gauss, and then we're gonna pass in the type. So morph types, and then finally pass in the kernel. Okay, so that's, here we'll plot our image. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a C map equals gray here to make it grayscale. Okay, and then we have plt.title is gonna be our title. So our title is gonna come from morph titles and pass it in, okay? So now we could go ahead and plot this and you can see the different operations. So in the very beginning, we saw the image, which was um, dilate minus erode. So we'll see how that looks like. So that one will be the gradient operation. So if I run this file, let's take a, we'll zoom in on the gradient operation to see what's happening. So gradient was dilate minus erode. So if I zoom in to like this region here, dilate, and then I zoom in here to erode, so notice we have a thin black line and a dark black line, right? So if we zoom into the gradient, let's see what we would expect. You could kind of see this like white and then a middle black part. Okay, so it's it's kind of as if it's subtracting away for dilate, subtracting away erosion. So that's why you get like two white lines across and a dark line in the middle because it's subtracting away. Okay, so you can see the results of the two operations. So that one makes intuitive sense. You could go ahead and go through the same exercise to see how you could physically interpret the different operations by doing what I just did. Okay, and for a bonus, we'll take a look at some custom kernels that you might deal with. So these custom kernels, uh, sometimes you might have special shapes that you want. So here we have, a, we're gonna call this a lips kernel here. So we have cv dots, uh, the function is called get structured, structuring elements, and you could pass in the type that you want. So here we have a morph, uh, we're gonna call this morph ellipse. And then the kernel size is say five by five. And then there's another one with a similar, similar type. Um, it's called cross kernel. We also use the same function. So get structure elements, structuring elements, and then we pass in cv.morph cross. And again, we're gonna do a five by five for the kernel. And then here, we're just gonna print it out to see what it looks like. So we have our ellipse kernel, and then we have our cross kernel. So for this one, you can tell I usually don't print stuff, but here we're gonna print it out to get a visual of what the kernel looks like. So. You can see here, this is the ellipse kernel. And you can see it's kind of zeros here, zeros on bottom. So it's kind of forming a somewhat elongated shape in a way. And then the cross is just ones down the middle and one down, down the middle to the top and bottom and left to right. So you can see it's like a cross. Okay, so that's it for morphological transformations. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.